on March 11, 2011. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station suffered a severe accident brought about by the tsunami caused by the Great East Japan earthquake. We would like to share with you an update on the situation of the nuclear power station, the progress of various measures in action, and life in Fukushima today. The tsunami hit the nuclear power station, where units 1 through 3 were running, and resulted in the loss of cooling function. The fuel melted, and a huge amount of hydrogen was generated. Consequently, the buildings of units 1, 3, and 4 suffered hydrogen explosions. At unit 1, the building cover was installed over the original reactor building to prevent the dispersion of radiation. The cover is being dismantled in preparation for the fuel removal operation. The hydrogen explosion at Unit 1 blew out the upper side panels of the Unit 2 reactor building, causing hydrogen to escape. The panel openings have been closed to prevent dispersion of radioactive materials. As for Unit 3, large size rubble has been removed out of the upper section of the reactor building. Presently, Removal of roughly 20 tons of large-size rubble out of the spent fuel pool is underway by remote control. After the rubble removal is completed, the cover will be installed for the removal of the spent fuel. Removal of fuel from spent fuel pool in Unit 4 was completed in December 2014, and the unit is being maintained in a stable condition. Cooling is continuing stably in all of the units. The melted fuel inside the nuclear reactors continues to be cooled with water. Contaminated water is thus generated inside the reactor buildings. The contaminated water is confined inside the reactor buildings because water levels are controlled so as to prevent outflow from the buildings. In addition, a system has been established to circulate the fuel cooling water so as to suppress an increase in the amount of contaminated water. Almost all of the contaminated water stored in tanks has undergone the first round of purification treatment and the second round for further purification is ongoing. The radioactivity concentration of seawater near the site is now sufficiently low. Nonetheless, to further reduce the risk, various measures are being implemented based on the following uncompromising three basic principles. The high concentration contaminated water retained in trenches adjoining the buildings has been removed completely. To isolate water from contamination sources, multiple countermeasures are implemented, including the pumping up of groundwater from a well before it flows into the buildings and installing landside impermeable walls of frozen soil to shut out the groundwater flow. To prevent groundwater from carrying radioactive materials into the ocean, measures such as installation of seaside impermeable walls are in progress, which facilitate the improvement of water quality in the surrounding sea area. To conduct a preliminary investigation leading to the determination of the position and shape of fuel debris, TEPCO and IRID in April 2015 successfully introduced advanced robots into the Unit 1 reactor primary containment vessel for the first time, overcoming the challenges posed by the high dose and narrow spaces. The images the robots took showed no major damages to the walls of structures supporting the reactor pressure vessel or to other original equipment. In addition to the images, the robots took temperature and dose data inside the primary containment vessel. The data showed that the dose was lower than had been anticipated. For nuclear reactor investigation, a novel technology using a cosmic ray, or the muon transmission method, has been developed by IRID together with other research institutions in Japan and overseas. 
Measurements began on February 12, 2015 with Unit 1. As of this moment, no large fuel blocks exceeding 1 meter in size have been detected at the core location where the fuel had been placed originally. This observation supports the earlier assessment that most of the fuel debris must have melted and dropped off the reactor core. Domestic and overseas wisdom and all best available technologies, not just those in the nuclear power field, will be mobilized in the effort to achieve safe removal of the fuel debris. The work environment is being improved too. Decontamination work on the site has progressed and the air dose rate has fallen. At the time of the accident, protective clothing was worn in the main anti-earthquake building. However, it is now safe enough to work wearing normal work clothing. It is also now possible to work in a larger area than before with only a half face protective mask on. The workers used to bring with them cold boxed meals. Now, a large rest house and the Fukushima Revitalization Meal Service Center have opened. Warm lunches and suppers have become available to the approximately 7,000 people working in the site. Information on progress such as the above is made available to the public in a timely manner. In addition, as part of efforts to achieve better understanding among the local residents and the communities concerned, brochures are distributed and explanation is provided by TEPCO executives themselves. The radioactive dose level in Fukushima Prefecture has been decreasing substantially reflecting the progress of decontamination work in the living environments in the evacuation area as well as in other areas. Restoration efforts to develop life infrastructure are also progressing and evacuation orders are sequentially being lifted. The return of residents to the Miyakoji district of Tamura City where the evacuation order was first lifted in April 2014 is progressing smoothly. In April 2014 Unscare stated in its report that the occurrence of a large number of radiation-induced thyroid cancers, as had been observed after Chernobyl, could be discounted for Fukushima Prefecture. To respond sincerely to the residents' concern over health effects of radiation, consultation desks have been set up and counselors have been assigned for empathetic support to the residents. By such means, the Japanese government has been continuing efforts in order to offer various help focused individually in cooperation with local authorities. The Japanese government has set out limits for radioactive materials and foods. The distribution of foods exceeding the limits is prevented by restrictions on shipment and other administrative measures. Accordingly, the Fukushima Prefectural Government has provided for monitoring of radioactive materials in agricultural products and implements intensive measures to ensure the safety of agricultural products further, including decontamination of farmlands and inhibition of cesium absorption to agricultural products. Especially with respect to rice, the staple food for the nation, the Fukushima Prefectural Government has had an all-bag inspection system in place since 2012. More than 10 million bags of rice are inspected individually every year, and only those that have satisfied the limits are allowed to be distributed in the market. With respect to fishery products, constant monitoring has been going on since the accident. Trial fishing and marketing have begun for fish species that were found to be safe by the monitoring. In line with the responses of customers, the permitted fishing methods, fish species and sea zones are being expanded gradually. The Japanese government is committed to full-scale restarting of the fishery industry. Step, people are coming back to their hometowns along with the lifting of the evacuation orders. 
residents are sharing their feelings and strengths to build even stronger bonds than before through the return of local festivals and community events. Revitalization beyond mere restoration will allow that strength to shape tomorrow. With this resolve, Fukushima will continue to progress in firm steps towards new horizons.